So it's time. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Tired? <laughs> Been learning a lot throughout the week? Um, how many of you haven't used Salt Cloud uh, yet or don't know about it? Okay. Um, So my talk today is basically uh, about managing your VMware infrastructure uh, using Salt Cloud. Uh, if you've used Salt Cloud before, uh, you'll know that it can manage multiple cloud providers, public or private. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. I'm, uh, I'm Nitin, um, systems developer and programmer at Clemson University. Um, those, those are the GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, um, accounts. You can follow me. Um, I, I post a lot of stuff, um, so you can always keep up, uh, up to date. Uh, you can also tweet the session, so feel, fl uh, feel free to click pictures and tweet it. So a couple of things about me. Uh, I've spoken at a lot of conferences, uh, traveled throughout the world. Um, I spoke last year at SolCon 15. Um, um, it was a similar talk using Salt Cloud to deploy um, virtual machines in Amazon uh, Web Services and uh, OpenStack. Um, and then I also uh, gave a talk last year at OpenStack Summit uh, in Tokyo. Uh, and then this year I'm, I'm speaking at SaltConf and there are other conferences I've spoken at. Uh, some of the significant contributions uh, I made uh, include um, making it compatible with Python 3. Uh, that's by far the, uh, the most amount of commits um, that I got from. Um, and then uh, I created the Salt Cloud VMware driver to, to automate the um, virtual machine provisioning, deep provisioning uh, at Clemson. Um, and then uh, DNS, ASAM, spacewalk runners, a uh, lot of bug fixes, uh, creating ZFS, ZPool modules. Um, I'm also one of the maintainers of uh, Salt stack formulas uh, on GitHub. So um, if I get time, I, I review them. But it's a big, it's a big team. Um, um, so by far, I have a number one rank by commits for contributions made to Salt stack um, within the past two years. Uh, and if you actually see the spike, you can tell that's me. Um, so those are some facts. Um, this is what the agenda looks like. I'm going to talk about what Salt Cloud basically is uh, on a very high level. Um, give you some basic terminology that I'll be using throughout the talk. So uh, providers, profiles, maps, what they are. And then I'm going to head into the live demo using Salt Cloud with VMware. Um, so Salt Cloud, what is it and, and why was it created? Uh, it's basically a public private private cloud provisioning tool. Um, initially, it was created uh, to accept the uh, salt keys on the master automatically. Uh, it wasn't uh, built for what it is today. Uh, it turned out to be a totally different product, and um, that, that wasn't the initial uh, plan. So it integrates salt with different cloud providers. Um, a lot of them are mentioned here, uh, Amazon, Azure, DigitalOcean, uh, Google Compute, HP Cloud, OpenStack, Rackspace, and, and there are many more. Uh, we're going to be focusing on VMware. So some basic terminology. Uh, providers basically contain the cloud provider related information. Uh, things like your, uh, what, what URL to connect to, what username, what password to use, uh, what, what port. Uh, to use, what protocol to use. Um, profiles contains VM-related information. So um, think of profiles as you would specify a profile for a Windows VM, uh, and then for a CentOS VM, for a Red Hat VM, um, Ubuntu, uh, because each one of them may have different uh, username, passwords uh, to SSH onto the onto the VM, and then uh, they can contain more information about the disk and, and what type of storage, 
uh, what network adapters to add, things like that. Um, maps are sort of similar, but they use information from the profile. So instead of creating a profile per VM, you can create a profile, um, gather all the common uh, fields that your VMs are gonna use, put them in a profile, and then create a map and specify like 10 VMs that you want to build, and they can use the same profile. So they're gonna, um, they're gonna get all the configuration from the profile, and you can also override it in your maps. So that's what maps are for. Um, the default location for them, it's Etsy, under Etsy Salt. Uh, Cloud Providers uh, is the config, default config file. Uh, additional config files can be added to cloud.providers.d. Um, same is true for the other configuration files uh, where you can add additional configuration under the .d folder. Right, so now we're gonna head into the live demo. Um, I'm gonna show how to set up, configure, manage uh, your VMware environment, and then in the end I'm gonna talk about how to deploy VMs uh, in your environment. All the presentation content is, is on GitHub. Uh, you, you, if you want, you can click a picture of that. Um, if you're already using a laptop, uh, I posted a tutorial. So I've posted the commands I'll be running. Uh, you can follow um, that. Is that visible? Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is install Salt Cloud. Uh, I've got an Oracle Linux 6.7 VM here built from scratch. Um, and uh, the first thing we want to do is install Salt and Salt Cloud. So I'm gonna do yum install salt-cloud. And it also uh, installs the salt master um, in libcloud since it uses those uh, dependencies. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the, the Python uh, API for interacting with uh, vCenter and ESX hosts. It's officially supported by VMware. It's called uh, PyVomi or PyVMOMI. Um, so I'm going to do a pip install. And if you actually go to the salt docs, it, it talks about it in the instructions. Um, I'm gonna be installing version 5.5, 2014.1.1 of PyWomi. Um, we, um, there was an issue uh, that was uh, created on GitHub recently, uh, where if you've got certain versions of Python, uh, you're, you're gonna have SSL errors um, with PyVomi 6. So if you're running um, if you're running a version of Python which is less than 2.6 or if it's uh, 2.7.9 um, then you might want to use uh, PyVomi 5.5. Right? After we've installed that uh, we're going to configure the cloud provider so I cd into Etsy, salt, cloud.providers.d. 
and I create a <coughs> vmware.conf file here. If you go back at the docs, um, it says what configuration is required. So you can put as many vCenters, ESX hosts you want to interact with here. If you've got a vCenter, you probably won't uh, interact with the ESX host directly. So if you don't have a vCenter and you want to be able to do certain stuff, you can, uh, you can directly use the ESXi. So that's basically the configuration where you set the driver to VMware, uh, you set the user, uh, which is gonna talk to your vCenter. You're gonna set a password and then the URL for your vCenter. Um, you can also optionally specify the protocol and port. By default, it uses HTTPS and port 443. Should be enough for most uh, installations. So I created a sample script uh, under the repository. If you go under samples and you look at hdb underscore setup, so basically, what this does is you can set up certain information uh, that's required in the config file as uh, variables in this in this bash script. Uh, and what what it does is it it creates the HDB database. So it, so basically, instead of storing it plain text in your provider config file, what it does is it uses the HDB database or simple database. Uh, to retrieve the values. So you can store your username passwords in the database and have it uh, retrieve the values every time it wants to connect. So I already have this script on the server, so I'm gonna just go ahead and run that. So what it does is it, it, it changes uh, the master config, so it has to restart the master. Uh, first it tries to configure HDB, restarts the master, uh, then it creates a database, SQLite database, um, and you can change the default path for that. All of that is specified in the, uh, in the default variables. Um, once all of the, those variables are set in the database, it's gonna create the provider config file, which I'm just gonna show you in a minute. And then it's also gonna test the vCenter connection. So everything returned as true, and then it says the connection was successful to the vCenter. So here's how the provider config file looks now, like now, and it doesn't it doesn't have any passwords or username. Um, it's directly pulling information from SDB. The ESXi host user and ES, ESXi host password are, are optional. Um, I put them here because I'm going to be demoing how to uh, add and remove or disconnect. Actually, add and remove your ESXi host, and you need a uh, username and password for the ESXi host to do that. So once that's done, uh, now we're just gonna jump into running certain commands. So I've got my vCenter pulled up here and I've got uh, four hosts that I'm gonna be using uh, for today's demo. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, exiting a, a host from maintenance mode. Right now, all of them are in maintenance mode, so I'm gonna just um, exit one of them. saltcloud f uh, means I'm running a function against my v, VMware environment or my provider. That's the function I'm gonna be using, exit maintenance mode. And then you specify your provider that you configured in the provider file. Uh, the, it uses the ID. So, and 
and you also have to specify what host. So I'm going to pick ESX72. And then if you go to your vCenter back again, you refresh. Um, you kicked off the task and it's, it's trying to poll it right now. Uh, it'll return as soon as it finishes. All right, so that exited. Uh, similarly, you can enter it into maintenance mode back again. So just change it from exit to enter, run again. All right. Uh, so you can see the tasks here. Um, now I'm going to show you how to connect and disconnect a host. So since they're all dis uh, already connected, I'm going to disconnect them. So you can see the host is already disconnected now. So run, you mean run it in background? Um, not run it in the background, but once it's sent the command and the job is queued and running, mm -hmm. it's not wait for it to finish. Um, you could run the salt cloud command in the background and it won't pull. Um, but right now there's no option to just um, issue the command and stop the polling. That won't work with this. So we disconnected the host and we're going to try and connect it back. So for, for running these functions, you don't need uh, the ESXi username and password. This is directly talking to the, to the vCenter API. So the host connected back again. The next thing is you're removing a host from your vCenter inventory. So if you want, if you have a ESXi host that you want to move from one vCenter to another, um, or if you want to move it from one data center to another data center within the same vCenter, you have to remove it and then add it back. So, so the command for that is <coughs> remove underscore host and this uses the vCenter API. Um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't require username and password. Only the addition of host requires the credentials. So if you go back and look. Oh, I forgot to mention this. So remove host right now has a, has a, a critical bug where if you try to remove one host, um, It'll, it'll, re it'll actually remove the whole cluster. Uh, so I would, I would, I would say don't, 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 don't run it in your production environment. Uh, it's already fixed. Uh, I fixed the issue in develop branch and backported it to all the branches. So we just have to wait for, for salt team to package it and. Um, so as you can see, it removed the whole cluster. Um, but we're gonna add them back. So, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna create a new data center, then I'm gonna create a new cluster, and then uh, the four hosts that got removed, I'm gonna add them back. So basically move them from one data center to another one. So to create a data center, 
uh, the command is sort cloud dash f create underscore data center created on vcenter03 and the name is going to be dash dash data center And I'm running these commands in debug mode so you can see more information of what's, what's going on. Um, this says it's created. If you go back, refresh, your data center is there. It's empty right now, so we're going to go ahead and create a cluster. So the command for that is create underscore cluster and I'm going to name it test host cluster it also requires the data center argument because you have to specify which data center to create the cluster in if we go back and look Your cluster is right there, but there are no hosts. So let's go ahead and add a ESXi host. So cloud f when we remove the host, we use removed underscore uh, host. When we add it, we're going to use add underscore host. Um, specify the vCenter. Specify the host to add. And since we're adding to a cluster, we're going to specify the cluster here. If you want to add a standalone host, uh, you would specify a data center instead of a cluster. So it will add it. Uh, as a standalone host uh, without DRS and HA enabled. If you add it to a cluster, by default, uh, it enables HA and DRS uh, for, for all the ESXi hosts that belong to that cluster as you keep adding them. So I run that. And if you don't specify SSL thumbprint, it actually gets the thumbprint from the host itself and now it's trying to add it back uh, we can go here and refresh All right there's your host uh, so it, it added it back if I go under the data center look at related objects um, it, it it sees all the data stores that the ESXi uh, host sees uh, it'll see all the networks that that are attached to that ESXi host. Uh, it'll see any VMs, uh, if, if there are any VMs on, on the host. Um, so basically, when you want to automate, you're not probably not going to run these um, commands one by one. So if you've got like 100 hosts, you, you're not going to run uh, add underscore host 100 times um, and let it do that. So I, I uploaded a, a small sample of what, what you could do, basically. Uh, I created a bash script. Uh, it's called build env, build environment. And it's, it's pretty simple. It basically calls the salt cloud functions here. So uh, whatever I just showed you, I'm going to run this, <coughs> this bash script. Uh, and it, it'll create a data center. It'll create a cluster. Uh, and any host you specify as standalone or, or as clustered, it's going to add them to your inventory. And here's where you specify uh, the list of what hosts to add to your cluster and what hosts to add a standalone host. Uh, the only information you need to specify here is the vCenter ID, uh, which is basically what you configured in your provider, uh, and also what data center name and cluster name to use. Uh, so we're going to go back to our vCenter and I'm, I'm going to remove this host. And 
I'm going to basically run that script. So it checked the, the data center already existed, so it didn't create it. Um, the cluster already exists, so it didn't create it. Um, the hosts don't exist, so it's going to add two hosts, ESX 72 and 73, uh, into the cluster, and it'll add the remaining ones um, as standalone hosts. And these are the ESXi hosts that were removed accidentally uh, from the cluster, which belongs to another data center. So I plan on adding a lot of more functionality um, that can be done using Bash or, or just all cloud commands. Uh, usually, typically, this is uh, things that Windows admins or uh, uh, people would do from a Windows server using PowerShell. Uh, for Linux, there's not really a solution of directly uh, running commands. Uh, you could use Salt Cloud to do that, or you could directly interact with the API. Uh, Ruby, Python, whatever API, uh, and build your own application. So it finished, and if you go back, we've got we've got two ESXi hosts in the cluster and two standalone hosts here. So that was basically uh, how to do a majority of the things using the VMware Cloud Driver. Now what I'm going to be talking about is how to create a virtual machine. Uh, for that, you have to first configure a profile. So I'm going to cd into etc salt cloud.profiles.d. If you go online to the docs, and the easy way, if you just Google salt cloud VMware, and the first two links uh, basically talk about uh, how to configure uh, the getting start started with VMware talks about uh, how to deploy a virtual machine. And the, the other link shows all the available functions. So basically, whatever functions I showed you, there's more documentation about them here, uh, what options you can use. There are more options that, that I didn't use in the demo, but you can, you can look them up here. So if you go to the getting started document, it shows you what the profile looks like. Uh, you can either clone from a template. So if you already have a template, you can clone that and you can specify what options to change, uh, any network adapters to add, uh, any disks to add, um, CD drives, uh, SCSI adapters, specify a domain, DNS servers to be configured. Uh, what data store folder and there are there are a lot of options and if an option doesn't exist you can actually specify extra underscore config and you can pass it either as a guest variable or uh, manually set the configuration here um, and there's documentation about each um, field here so if something's not clear you can go and look at that so for this example I'm just going to use a minimal profile here. So it's basically what vCenter and distribution. Um, the way I like to name them is um, um, I have two, two, actually three templates. Uh, I'm going to be deploying Oracle Linux VM, Ubuntu VM, and Windows VM. So OL 6.7 is the version, and then deploy it on vCenter 03. So the provider here is going to be vCenter 03. I'm using the clone from option since I already have a template. Now, the way you can look up what templates you have is salt cloud dash dash list dash images. 
can run it on vCenter 03. <coughs> and right now it shows that I have those three templates. Yes. These three templates are actually stored on different ESX IOs in the cluster. Oh, okay. So right now what I'm showing you is not using this data center. Okay. It's using these hosts okay. and and they've got templates right here. Okay. So it's under a different data center basically what I'm using. But if your other data center had a, had a template, since it's just querying to the querying to the vCenter directly, mm -hmm. in your profile you can specify what data center it belongs to, right there. So under clone from, I'm, I'm going to specify that. So I copied that and what data center to deploy it to. Again, there's a command to list that. So saltcloud-f list underscore data centers. And you can pretty much list anything in your uh, inventory. It's called list data centers. So I'm going to deploy it to Clemson Cloud and we can go ahead and check what clusters are available. So those are the clusters. I can go and look what data store clusters are available. So that's the data store cluster. If I just wanted to specify a specific data store, I could do that as well. And I could list those. So those are the ones available here. For my VM, if, if I want to use the DHCP network, I can also list the networks. Those are the networks. And since it queries the vCenter API directly, it's pretty fast. So um, if, we, if we pull all the information from, from about 1,000 VMs, it, it takes around 10 seconds or, or less than that. And it pulls almost all the information about that VM. Um, one way you could do that is you could do a salt cloud dash f list underscore nodes underscore min. Min basically the min function shows you the VMs that exist with just true. So you can get a list. If you wanted more information, um, you could do list underscore nodes and it would give you a little more information. So basically the ID, what image it is, what IPs it has, what public IPs it has, what the size is, CPU and RAM, and what the state is. If you wanted some more information, you could do list nodes full. And what that shows you is for, for all the VMs and templates, uh, let me find that. It's actually a lot of information. There it is. So information about the devices, the CD drive, what, what type it is, uh, the disks, what size disks there are, what data store it's on, each disk. Um, you could run this as a cron job or something to like keep your CMDB updated. So if you wanted to pull information every night, that uh, if there was a 
storage DRS and, and the, the VM changed from one data store and went to another one and you wanted to keep track of that, you could query this information every night and have a reactor that updates your CMDB based on this information. Um, it also shows you what, what files it has, the VMDK files, and what, where they're stored, so the complete path to that. This one's a Ubuntu, uh, doesn't have a host name uh, because it's a template. That's the image, doesn't have any MAC addresses or networks because it, uh, it again, it's a template. And tools is not running. So going back to the profile, we went to cl cluster, we went to data store. Devices, uh, my template doesn't have any NIC, uh, since I like to keep the templates clean. So whenever I build them, I remove any extra network adapters um, or any information from the template itself. So I added a network adapter there, uh, network adapter one. I wanted to use that network um, and switch type can be distributed or standard de depending on if it's a distributed port group or a, or a standard uh, network. Domain, domain is basically uh, what gets configured in your etc.resolve.conf file uh, on Linux. On Windows, I'm not aware what file that is. But basically it uses VMware tools to, to configure the NIC to configure the domain, to, to set the DNS servers. Password is, is the password it's gonna use for salt to be able to SSH and run the bootstrap script. So what salt does is after it deploys the VM in your VMware environment, it'll try to SSH and put the files you specify, any repositories you want, uh, and then it runs the bootstrap script to install salt and after that, it automatically runs high state if you specify startup states as high state. So you just have to trigger the build and your VM gets built. Uh, you don't have any manual process in there. Under minion, you can specify any minion configuration that you want the minions to have. So uh, the minion we built, all of them are gonna point to this master. So. Uh, you can specify the master FQDN here. I already have a profile here configured, so I'm gonna move that over. And I'm just gonna show it to you what it looks like. So I created one for Oracle Linux. Um, just uses the default ABC123 password. Um, that's not actually the password for our production VMs. Uh, points to the master there that we are using. Now this is, a, this is a cool thing where you can specify the common things and then you can extend from it. So for Ubuntu, it's gonna use most of the same, like same data center, same folder, it's gonna use the same data store. It, I wanted to have the, use the same network. Uh, it's a DHCP network, so they're gonna get different IPs. Uh, same DNS server, same password, same minion config. So I just extend from, from, that, from that profile ID. I specify the provider and I specify the template to clone from since that's different. Once that's done, you can, you can create, or actually you have to update the bootstrap script first, so run update dash bootstrap. The reason we do this is uh, because the bootstrap script uh, in the stable version is broken for Oracle Linux. Um, so we get the latest develop branch. And now I'm gonna spin up one VM just using the profile. So salt cloud dash P, dash P means small p, means uh, you're using a profile. I want to use the Ubuntu profile. 
So I'm going to use that and then name my VM. So CU dash. So I'm just going to run that. And right now, it's going to query the vCenter to check if the VM exists or not. If it doesn't exist, it's going to uh, try to create it. Uh, before it tries to create it, it, it gathers all the configuration data you've specified. And if something's different, like for an example, uh, let me get rid of this data center first. So the reason it failed the first time uh, is because I had ESX host in one data center that I moved to another one, but they had they shared the same data store. So VMware complains about ESX hosts that have the same data store across two data centers. So now it's trying to apply the storage DRS. So almost done. There's our, <coughs> there's our VM. And it's booting right now. So after the VM has been cloned or created, uh, VMware driver basically waits for VMware tools to start running. Uh, we need VMware tools to get the IP information uh, to configure the network um, to push any files over to the server, so it does all of that. Depends on what you configure your template to use. Um, in my example, I use both. So the Ubuntu VMs use uh, the Open VM tools. So in a minute. When this comes up, you're going to see the guest managed. Yeah. Yep, there it is. So this one says guest managed. And the other VMs use the VMA tools official. And the re Another reason we need VMware tools to be running is because if it's not running, it won't report the IP address here uh, in vCenter. There is no way to get the IP that the VM got unless VMware tools is running on the VM itself. So while this is running in the background, I'm going to create a map. Uh, typically, you don't usually create one VM. Uh, you want to be able to create like eight VMs in parallel because the time it takes to build one VM is the same as the time it takes to build eight VMs in parallel. So uh, for that, maps are pretty useful. You could create a test map. So I'm just going to call it test.map here and specify my profile here, so vCenter03, use that profile and then specify the list of VMs you want to build. So I wanted to build I 
I wanted to build that VM and then O2, O3, O4. And then I also wanted to build the Ubuntu ones. You can also override any information here. So as an example, for this VM, if I want to increase the number of CPUs to 4 and memory to 8 GB, I can do that. Once you yes 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 so to build it I'll use salt dash cloud dash capital P means parallel if I don't specify that it's going to build them serially so uh, in your environment if you want your database server to be built first and then your app server then you wouldn't use parallel in that case because you'll specify your DB server, then you'll specify your app server, and then it's going to build them in serial order. So dash p dash m means use a map file, and then path to the map file, which is that. So coming back to the first build that we did using profile, right now it's running the bootstrap script to install salt uh, on the server. So it did get the IP, it could SSH. Uh, in our environment, it automatically creates the DNS records. Uh, so a map also does a check. Uh, as you can see, it says that one of the VMs that I built already exists. So it's only going to build the ones that don't exist. And it says, do you want to proceed? So yes. So while, while this is going on, uh, it's, it's going to take around um, three to four minutes for it to completely build all of those VMs. Uh, does anybody have any questions till now? Yes. We realize orchestrator is more like a GUI, um, and if someone knows we realize orchestrator, doesn't mean they know they can use Amazon or uh, other things, right? right? But if you know Salt Cloud, that's an abstraction because a lot of the functions, uh, like list nodes and and show images and those sort of functions, are the are consistent across all providers. So if you know Salt Cloud and if you're a developer and you want to interact with multiple uh, environments, um, people prefer Salt Cloud. Uh, it's also easier to automate uh, from coming from Linux. Uh, so when you I showed you an example for clone from, uh, which basically clones the template. You can specify create and then specify the type of guest you want to deploy, uh, Windows, Linux, whatever. That basically con creates the, the container. or the, It doesn't have the OS yet. just builds a, a, a dummy uh, VM. And you could specify a CD and mount an ISO there. So the example I showed you, you could specify an ISO path like that. And what it does is it will create the VM, mount the ISO, and then boot it. Can you do that with a repo instead of an ISO? A network repo? So you want a Pixie boot? Yeah. Not right now. But I, I have some, some work going on that. Where, where it'll do that. I just have to do some more testing and um, push it back upstream. So, yeah, I, one of the things we're struggling with is the automation of creating the template. Do you have stuff on your roadmap for that? Like, if I have a, a VM, and I want to clone it to a certain template, and I want to export that to OEM, like those kind of workflows? 
So right now, I, I, I update my template because it needs a YAM update every, right. every now and then. Yep. And I use Salt Cloud to do that. So I use Salt Cloud to deploy a template or actually deploy a VM, yep. install Salt on it, and then I run a set of states to, to register it with Spacewalk, Satellite, do an update, uh, upgrade VMware tools if required, yep. then shut it down. And then I and, and then it issues a clone to template command. From, from the smart, from, so that's for that's in the module. It's already in there. Okay. Yes. So yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then when you do clone to template, then what about what about exporting it to OVF so you need to move it around between different VSIMs? Right now the OVF functionality doesn't exist. Okay. So it will clone it to a template. Yeah. Uh, or convert it to a template but it won't export it. If, if there's a feature request, feel free to submit one. Um, uh, that's a pretty good use case. The upgrade for the hype. Let's say you're all 5.5 today and you want to move to 6.0 or you want to move to patch on the ESI right? First, how are you, how are you displaying the base ESXi OS that's so you your blade? And then second, how would you handle the upgrades and stuff like that? We use XCAT to manage all of that. Okay. Um, so XCAT is more like a cluster manager and uh, you can deploy the ISOs to uh, your ESXi's and upgrade them. Using that. No, Update Manager is a whole another product, but XCAT is not by VMware. Uh, it's actually an open source tool. So. Does it do snapshotting? Like if you deployed your web farm and then once that was complete, you had to snapshot the VMs for that. There is a, a snapshot functions. Uh, you can revert to a snapshot. You can create a snapshot. Um, and do you run this from the cell master? <coughs> it is advised, advised to run it from a salt master because you typically, when the VM is built, want to do a high state. Uh, but you don't need a salt master to. You don't need the states. If all you want to do is build VMs and not run any states on them, you can install Salt Cloud on a Mac or, or, or anywhere and just build your VM. You mentioned your capability of uh, updating DNS. How are you doing that? So when the VM gets created, it sends an event back saying created. Uh, we have a reactor that watches for that event. And once that's done, I created a salt runner, uh, salt DNS runner, uh, which basically dynamically creates the DNS using the IP and the, the name of the VM. And in, in the config, we also specify the domain. So it uses that domain as a zone. Uh, what, use, what permissions did you have to get to get the right permissions in the DNS? Uh, That's my biggest struggle, is getting permission to do that. Are you using the dynamic DNS? Yes. That RNDC with the um, TSIG key. Yeah. Uses a TSIG key to authenticate. If, if there are any more questions, I'll take them outside. Uh, there's another talk uh, going on.